My film uh, is centered around a man named Coleman Sneed, who has PTSD. He was an Iraq War veteran, Ranger, uh, really was in the thick of it, uh, and he was involved in some very heavy special missions. Uh, the film starts basically, he's got, suffers paranoia, all some of the aspects of having PTSD, and he begins to see things uh, one night at a gathering in his cul-de-sac of friends and family. and that paranoia starts manifesting itself in many ways and, and brings in his friends and family who can't understand what he's going through and think that what he may be seeing, maybe real, maybe not, you know, is driving him to madness and uh, it's taking them along with him. And, uh, and it's something that I've actually personally witnessed uh, as somebody who I knew who had suffered from this kind of uh, trauma that's very real. And I took that and found a way to create a story that I think that can engage people to really have a discussion about PTSD uh, and also what's going on in, in our world today, you know, and where our place in America and what we're doing with our, with our awesome military and how much do we push our, our, our citizens, who, soldiers who are, are constantly having to do these tasks. Uh, but I tried to bring something that was more fun uh, that I think the audience would love to see. And uh, I don't want to give away endings and, and surprises, but... Uh, I, I, I'm a fan of, uh, like I said, Christopher Nolan. I like M. Night Shyamalan. These are, of course, John Carpenter's one of, is almost like a father to me. So with all those influences, uh, I try to incorporate a lot, a little bit from each to create something that I think, once again, I think people will really love to watch. I think, I think it's scary. I think, yeah, um, you know, one of the things I've, I've had to witness is somebody who's, the horror to me is somebody suffering that kind of, uh, disease you know what does it do it brings in they do things that are not uh, they're just they're a little bit out of their uh, how can I put it they they're really scary when you see somebody going through that 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 mania the mania that they're out there they're all of a sudden you know people are involved like law enforcement you know those are scary things to this day you know even though you shouldn't be scared of the police you don't know what's going to happen when you start seeing weapons drawn people are starting to go through these this angst you know, this particular subject that I, that I knew, you know, you, you can see it, you know, and you're like, oh my God, what, you know, it's just a matter of one bad decision. You could have blood on your hands and it could go both sides. A cop could die, he could die. Maybe a citizen, somebody, a neighbor of mine could die. And you look at that and go, you know, that to me, when I think of horror, horror to me is not just a supernatural or a monster or a creature, but to me the horror is humanity, of what we're really capable. Um, I loved In Contact. There was a statement, you know, we're capable of such great dreams and terrible nightmares. And I've always been drawn to the darkness of, of, of humanity. You know, you know, you can look at through the ages all the way from, you know, going from either Hitler or if we're talking in Vietnam, you know, where we were blowing up people with Agent Orange and, and different, you know, things. You know, what we're capable of doing is horrific. Uh, and seeing somebody with PTSD, you know, going through all that. And how they how they affect others around them, you know, it, it's just, you know, and how can we do a better job? At the end, I think horror should teach a lesson. I think it should be something that tells people that they're not aware of, that that is out there. Maybe, not, like I said, once again, not something so supernatural or, or a creature or a monster, but you know, there there's an underlying tone of reality that has to be addressed that we need to talk about. And I think we're going to see in the future. There's more and more of these citizen soldiers with PTSD uh, uh, that are coming out. We've been fighting these wars for a long time. Whether they're needed, that's not my place. So I'm not asking that question. I'm asking, what are we going to do with these individuals when we have the VA system not quite yet where it needs to be? What are we going to do you know, down the line? Years. Because this is not going to go away for them. And, and that's how I, I, I approach any subject. When I look, I look at the future of humanity. You know, how, where are we going? How are we treating each other? What's going to be for my child? And I think that's the end game. What is it for our future children? You know, how, what, do, what mark do we leave? What did I do to help out?
real beautiful thing that I got lucky. Uh, I used this website called Short Film Texas, and I, I happened to luck of an individual named Tom Moore. I cast it, who was my technical director and cinematographer, military, and he brought a lot of military people uh, as part of my technical crew. Uh, on the flip side, I actually, he recommended one of the actors named Jacqueline Knox. He was, uh, he played James Matley. He's, he was a Marine. He was in Desert Storm. And uh, Eric Hansen, the lead, he was in Navy. So these individuals do bring about a, a sense of authenticity. They gave me, all these individuals gave me input on how this character should be, how things, the language, how the, you know, the, from the script writing, you know, we, we, he talks about route Irish. Originally, we were just saying, you know, he was he was you know jobless, guarding the you know the the run from Baghdad to the uh, Saddam International. They like they would never say that. It would be this. Uh, the character uh, Eric Hansen understood PTSD because he knew people as being a veteran. He, you know, Tom Moore, my similar, he knows people. He served actually, I believe, in all three in three services. He was Army, Navy, and I believe Air Force. The only person I've ever met that's kind of cross that, that, that alley. So, uh, and there was just a lot of individuals. Uh, Giacomo, he was a Marine. And so he, he really, you know, he's, he's told me about his struggles and things like that. And he's, he knew people like that. So we could, I could draw from that and I was able to work. And it made my job as a director that I didn't have to sit there and say, because I don't have experience other than what I see as an observer. And as a filmmaker and a storyteller, you're an observer. And I can do my best, but at the end of the day, it makes it so much easier if you have somebody who's lived that life. They can actually, and that's what Eric, Eric brought that. Uh, and, and I introduced him to one of the individuals who did actually suffer from it, and so he could kind of get a composite a little bit. But the composite is of several characters, several people I know, which I think a lot of directors do when you're writing, especially writers and producers. When you're thinking of, uh, of an idea, you're drawing not just from one individual. You want to kind of bring in a few different things, because to make a different kind of character and to really give it some depth. And that's how that's my approach of when I wrote this. And I actually wrote this because I was at Austin Film Festival and just like any film, what's great about a film festival is you get to learn from others and you listen to the knowledge. And the biggest thing I got to learn was not from a horror director, but from a comedy director, producer. Uh, Everybody Loves Raymond, the producer of that, told me, he was telling the whole audience, and he even told me, he said, you know, make sure you go film something, write something, and film it and find, you know, you can find people and make a budget. It doesn't have to be a whole lot. And you will find good people out there who want their shot. They want a chance. And if you've got a good story and you put your heart and soul into it and really think it out methodically and really, my most important is I want to entertain people too. You know, that's, that's a big, big thing for me. You know, it's not just preaching, but also I want to entertain. You. And, you know, that's why we're in this business. And once that all comes back, you get called the sack. You, that's what happens. And it, and it was my first time ever directing. Never did it before. And I had such, a, but I understood having a great crew really makes the difference. And you know, we went through late nights of shooting, and it was every minute was awesome, crazy fuel Red Bull times. Uh, just and and. and I wouldn't. I loved it. It was cold. It was windy. You experience everything that could ever go wrong in a film. You just adjust and you do your best with what you got, you know. And you, without sacrificing, you know, quality. And then, as you know, Kevin, editing will take care of a lot of thing in post. So, uh, you know, and there was a lot of that. There was a lot of trial and error in the in the editing. I never edited before. I had an editor. I had to learn how to communicate with an editor, uh, with sound. I was blessed to have a man, my producing partner, Jose Pimentel, uh, who's in LA, who's a professional, uh, who's done many TV shows and things, and he's been a mentor for me to guide me, and, and he, I didn't have somebody who could score music for me. Uh, the person who I had, unfortunately, couldn't do it. They just, it just happens, and he, I asked him, give me a recommendation of somebody you might know, and then he took, he said, you know what, I like your story, let me do it. And I said, yeah, I said, I mean, and then he started telling me about things that we should change this in the editing process, and this should happen here and here. And, and you take those advice. As uh, I tell people, the biggest thing about producing and directing movies is that what you think is yours is you cannot think that way. You have to learn that it's a collaborative process, and you have to be willing to listen to everybody's 
valid opinions and work with that, you know, as much as you can. And, and that's what I love about this. And, and, and creating horror to me was one of the easiest ways that I could quickly make something within my own budget. I could create something that people love uh, that didn't, I didn't have to sit there for a sci-fi budget, you know, you have to have a lot of money, you have to have a lot of effects. With horror, you can go out there and just make something, and it can be great. You know, at the end of the day, we're, we all have a little bit of a, of a, of a darkness in us that, that we see and we can relate to it. And it could be a simple one minute film where you're, somebody jump scares you, or it could be a horror film about you're documenting a, a horrific crime, or maybe something the government's doing, you know, that's to somebody that's bad. That's how I see it. Um, currently, uh, we are actually uh, working on a comedy. Uh, we have a comedy we're, we're working on, but actually, Cul de Sac, we're in negotiations with uh, a current company that's pretty, it's, it's a, they're a very large media and entertainment company, and I'm not allowed to say who they are, they, it's because we're working with their development team. Uh, we've already had meetings, and we're getting ready to uh, start giving them the rest of the whole Bible, you could say, the show Bible. And uh, it's now at that point, once all these, the development and the creative executives and, you know, come into play, we, obviously things change, but it's once again, what becomes, what you think is yours is not. And you have to be willing to give up that, that control. And with that, hopefully you can steer them to not compromise your visions and what you see. But uh, that's where we are right now. We're working on several creating TV shows as far as, uh, Another horror one, um, I, I don't, I, I've got some ideas, I'm keeping them close to the vest, but uh, we, we're actually, like I said, we're trying comedy, I've never done comedy, so I'm trying that one. We're also looking at another one that's a, a, a drama, and then a, a, another family show we're looking at, but uh, with Pink Ninja Productions, our production company, now we can, my producing partner in LA, and I'm in New Orleans, we're meeting all kinds of people, and we're learning that uh, if you pursue this, you know, and you really love it, and you believe in it, and that, that voice that's, that, that won't leave you alone that says, you know, you're a storyteller. You got to, you're looking for the, if you've got that voice, it's going to haunt you until you get it. And you, I got to put it on pen and paper. I got to go out there and start filming soon. I got to do it. It, it, it. I can't live with myself if I don't start doing something creative. And that's where I'm at right now. And, and then, of course, I'm here at this awesome film festival. I'm so thankful for you, Kevin, for that as well. Thank you.